This past Sunday, we began a new series on 1 Samuel, starting in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And today, I want to look a little bit closer at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5, at a phrase we find in the text there to give you a deeper understanding of the biblical text. Now, you have to understand, phrases are funny things. Even in English, let's take, for example, if someone had come up to me after church on Sunday and said, Pastor, that sermon, you really hit it out of the park. Now, that's a really strange saying, that I hit it out of the park. Now, you may be wondering what that means. Now, if this came from an American, we would understand that he was referring to the sport of baseball. And in baseball, if you hit the ball out of the park, it means it's a home run. And the person who hit the ball gets to run around all the bases, come all the way back to home, and score a point for his team. And if any of his teammates were on bases one, two, or three, they also get to come in and score points for the team. Now, you don't have to hit it out of the park to get a home run. But if it goes all the way out of the park, I mean, it's like the best of the best of the best. I mean, you've gone above and beyond. You can't do better than hitting it out of the park. So if that person comes up to me on a Sunday and says, oh, pastor, that your sermon today, you'd really hit it out of the park. Well, that's what they mean, that I did a great job. Right? If somebody says that to you, in something you've done. But imagine if a thousand years from now, some archaeologists dig up a, a written book and it mentions somebody hitting something out of the park. They might start to wonder, what did this mean? If it was that exact scenario that we just outlined, they might start thinking, well, was the pastor preaching in a park? Or, or did he preach in a park most Sundays? And this Sunday, he was not in the park? Or did, did he actually hit someone? Did he throw his Bible or the notes out of the park? You would have all these, what seemed to us to be very silly questions, but you'd have archaeologists and theologians and other scholars all arguing and bickering over what is the actual meaning of the text, that he hit it out of the park, assuming that they don't have baseball anymore. Well, there's a lot of phrases like this in the Bible that I'm sure the author and the original readers completely understood what was meant. But sometimes when we read them today, they don't make a lot of sense to us. And it takes scholars studying and studying other texts from the same time period and in the same language to come to a better understanding of what that phrase may have actually meant. You find one of those phrases here in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 5. The verse reads, But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Now what's going on here is Elkanah, Hannah's husband, who's the father of Samuel, the Samuel that 1 Samuel is named after. At this point, Hannah has no children. And she's very upset about this. She's very distraught not having a child. Now Elkanah has another wife, Penina, and she has sons and daughters. We don't know how many, but at least four, because she has sons and daughters, which means at least two of each. So Penina, she's quite happy having her children, and Hannah's very upset that God has not given her any children. And so, whenever they would go annually to Shiloh to sacrifice, Elkanah would give his wife Penina and her children each a portion. But for Hannah, it says he gave her a double portion. But in the Hebrew, it actually says that he gave her two noses as one portion. Now again, in, in our language today, that doesn't make a lot of sense. What does it mean? He gave her two noses. But, there's ritual texts from the city of Emar. Now, the city of Emar is near Aleppo in northern Syria today. And in those texts, it talks about how the head of a sacrificial animal is treated as a favored part. So what this is likely saying is that Elkanah gave Hannah a double portion, and not just a double portion, but a double portion of the best part. You see, if the nose represents the head, which is the best part, that it would make sense giving her two noses as one portion. Oh, one nose or one head might be a portion, and so two, it's a double, and it's the best part. Now, we don't know that that actually means it was literally the head of an animal. Or if he's just saying, using a phrase that would have been common in that day, that it was a double portion of the best part. Now, we don't know for sure, which is why the translators have simply translated a double portion. But that's really not the literal translation. It's two noses as one portion. So her portion was two noses. But again, it may not literally be two noses, but rather a double amount of the best part is the most, I think, the most likely rendering. 
But it's very interesting as we get into the text and start to understand some of these, some of these nuances. But there's something else this tells us that I want to leave you with today. Elk and his love for his wife Hannah and for his wife Penina and her children are an example of God's love for us. Elkanah did not give evenly to his wives, but he did care for them in an equal way. Penina he had been able to give children to and a portion, but Hannah he had not been able to give any children to, and he gave her a double portion, presumably of the best parts. In the same way, God loves you, God loves me, God loves his children, but he doesn't give to us all equally, but he does care for us equally. And so while sometimes it may seem unfair, why are other people receiving blessings that I'm not getting? As Hannah could have looked at Penina and thought, well, what have I done to offend God? But yet God loved Hannah. And he actually had a wonderful plan that it wasn't just for Hannah, but was for his kingdom to bring Samuel into the world and for Samuel to serve him and anoint David to be king of Israel, who would one day through the generations the Messiah would be born through the line of David. It was a great, wonderful plan of blessing. But at the time... Hannah was distraught. She didn't understand. But it's a great reminder to us that God does not give to us equally, but He does love us equally. He cares for us equally, and He gives to us what we need at the time. But also, He has a, a bigger plan that we don't always understand. But having these stories out of the Bible help us to be able to look at the past with hindsight, that's 2020, and understand what God was doing, which gives us the ability to look to the future with eyes of faith, so that we can be faithful and trust God even when we don't understand, knowing that ultimately He is in control, He does care for you, and He has a plan, and one day it's all going to make sense in the end.